Hi, this is Professor Stugard, and in this video, we're going to discuss what it means when we have a correlation between two variables. So in this video, our goals are going to be to first just understand what a correlation means, and even more importantly, what it does not mean, and then also how we demonstrate correlation visually, and then mathematically, what are the measures we use to determine whether or not these two variables are going to be related to each other. Now, how can two variables be linked to each other? Well, we kind of see this all the time because cause and effect exists all around us constantly. You know, if it rained today, then the ground got wet. We have a cause and then an effect. The wind blows and then my napkin flew off the picnic table. We have a cause and then an effect. Joe didn't study for his test. Then he got the answers wrong. There's a cause and then there's an effect. And typically we always have a cause that leads to our effect. That's just how our world works. And what's also useful is that a lot of times we can look at the effect and then determine what the cause is. If the ground is wet when I go outside, well, it must have just rained. If my napkin flew off my table, then I knew it must have been the wind blowing. If Joe failed his test, well, probably he didn't study. And so cause and effect are really linked together in our daily experience and Really, every day can feel like a never-ending chain of cause and effect with one thing leading to the other. And so it can be very, very easy for us to think that every effect must have a cause. And all right, that might actually be true, but separating the cause from the effect can actually be much more complicated than I think we sometimes appreciate. So for example, this is a fairly recent study, and in this study, researchers found that someone who consumed nine portions or more of ultra-processed food in a day had a 50% increase in their risk for depression, and artificial sweeteners were associated with the greatest risk of depression. Now, when we hear that there was a study that linked these two variables, that linked uh, consuming ultra-processed food and depression, we are pre-programmed to all of a sudden start making stories in our head. So, for example, maybe you heard that and your story said, well, oh, wait a minute. If I eat too much processed food, I'm going to increase my likelihood for being depressed. So if you eat too much processed food, you'll be depressed. Ultra processed food is the cause. Depression is the effect. Now, maybe you heard that story and you thought, well, wait a second. If you're depressed, you're going to be much more likely to eat ultra processed foods. You know, if you're depressed, you're not going to be cooking meals for yourself. You're going to have to rely on pre-made meals, and that's going to be ultra-processed food. And so if you're depressed, that's going to lead to you consuming ultra-processed foods. So now depression is the cause, and ultra-processed food is the effect. But in reality, this study isn't able to determine which way it goes. All the studies showed is that eating ultra-processed food and suffering from depression are linked to each other. And that might actually even make sense because maybe there's a feedback loop going on. Maybe you feel depressed, so you eat ultra-processed food because you don't feel like cooking, but that's going to make you depressed, which means you're going to eat more ultra-processed food, and maybe that goes back and forth, and maybe they're linked in a deeper way than just one causing the other. Maybe they're stuck in some sort of feedback loop. And then when we throw in other factors, for example, we know that alcohol consumption is linked to depression, and we know alcohol consumption is also related to eating ultra-processed food. You get drunk, you're going to eat ultra-processed food. Again, you're not cooking typically. If you drink alcohol, again, that's usually linked to depression. So now we have all three of these factors all kind of working together. And which one's the cause? Which one's the effect? And what happens when we have this extra variable that is also affecting the other two in our study, we call that usually a confounding variable. And that happens when we can't really separate the cause and effect between multiple variables. If there's a variable you don't even consider in your study, we call that a lurking variable because it's kind of lurking there in the shadows and you forgot to think about it. And so you weren't even considering it in part of your explanation. Um, and that would be called part of a confounding variable as well. And so again, this cause and effect, this correlation can be very, very difficult to figure out what is actually causing what. So it is very, very, very important. The number one takeaway here is that observational studies, which is the majority of studies we hear about, they can never show causation. They can only show correlation. They can only show that two things are going to be related to each other. And it's important to remember, too, that when we do statistics, our statistical analysis is never going to be proof of anything. Our statistical evidence is, well, it's just that. It's evidence. We can build evidence towards 
a conclusion one way or the other, but it is never going to be definitive proof. And a lot of times statistics really is just there to show us where we need to research more. We can see things that are out of the ordinary and we know that, hey, I got to look a little bit deeper at that particular thing. So how do I actually determine then using math and statistics whether two variables are related to each other? Well, first we want to be able to visualize that relationship. Again, we're visual creatures. Being able to see things is very, very helpful. And then we also want to have a, some sort of mathematical value, some numerical value we can compute to determine whether or not those two variables are going to be related to each other. Um, and one thing I also want to make a note of now as well is that even if our visualizations and our summaries show that these two variables are related to each other, it's important to remember that there's always random chance and random chance can always result in variables appearing to be related when no true relationship actually exists between the two of them. All right, so how do I figure out if there's a correlation mathematically? Well, if I have two categorical variables or qualitative variables, uh, right, things that are just can be put in categories, they describe attributes, but they aren't actually numerical. We first would want to organize those, responsible, re, those responses and those two variables in our two-way table, or sometimes we call that a contingency table. And once we have that information organized, then we visualize with a side-by-side -side bar graph, and then we can summarize with the hypothesis test. So, for example, this survey question was asked, which is more important to protect, the environment or the economy? And I've read everyone that responded, 671 said it was more important to protect the environment, and 316 said it was more important to protect the economy. And so we can visualize this with a nice bar graph. We can see that uh, clearly it looks like environment is the more popular one to protect. We have almost a, a two to one ratio there, but Maybe we want to ask a deeper question. Are men and women answering this question in the same way? Or do men and women feel differently about which one is more important to protect? So this is where we bring in that two-way table. Now we're splitting up those totals for the environment and the economy, right? The 671 is now split between male and female. The 316 who said the economy, that's now split between male and female. We have our totals in each of the columns. And I take my two-way table and from my two-way table, I can now find each of these relative frequencies. And that's what I want to graph in my side-by-side -side bar graph. My side-by-side -side bar graph has got to be the relative frequencies because our sample sizes are not necessarily going to be the same. So we need to look at that proportion or that relative frequency or that percentage of men and women who answer this question. And when we do that, now we can see that uh, men, 63% of men answer that it's more important to protect the environment, while 37% said the economy as opposed to 73% of women said it was more important to protect the environment and only 27% said it was important to protect the economy. So clearly there is at least a little bit of difference between the two, right? There's about a 10% difference in how men and women answered this question, although clearly the environment is more important to men and women alike. But again, there is still that 10% difference. And is that 10% difference just random chance because of my sample? Or is there actually something going on? Are men and women answering this question differently? And this is where we'd use a hypothesis test. Now, we're not going to go into the details of the hypothesis test in this video. There's going to be another video for that. But I run my hypothesis test and it looks like there is a 0.076% probability that this difference is due to random chance. And that is a very low probability. That means that this probably did not occur due to random chance. So clearly men and women are answering this question differently. And it's also important to remember the way that this could be spun and explained because even though men and women are answering this question differently and clearly women seem to think it is more important to protect the environment, both genders here are both saying that the environment is definitely more important than the economy by a pretty significant margin. Okay, what if I have two numerical or two quantitative variables? Well, now I want to visualize that with a scatter plot, and I'm going to summarize whether there's a relationship with my correlation coefficient. So, uh, this is a real set of data. This is a scatter plot made from data that was published by 538. Uh, which is a website that does a lot of polling and sometimes they do sports and a whole bunch of other stuff. It was kind of founded by Nate Silver a while ago. Uh, this data is from 2014, so it's over a decade old now, but you know, it's still good to look at, but obviously keep in mind that things have changed in the last decade. And what this data set looked at is they compared different college majors across many, many different variables. So we're just going to look at two of those variables, which are the variables on my two axes here. Uh, and so each point is going to represent a college major and the two variables that we're looking at 
Along the horizontal, we have the proportion of women in that major, so from a 0% to 100%. And then the salary, or the median salary for people in that major when they graduated. Um, so again, this random point here, uh, this represents chemical engineering. We have a proportion of women of uh, 0.342, so 34% of chemical engineering graduates were women, and the median salary was $65,000. Uh, so again, that's how we would interpret this scatter plot. So does there appear to be a pattern to this data? So if I just look at this visually, is there some sort of pattern? Is there a correlation between the proportion of women in a major and the salary after graduation? So take a second to look at it, come up with your own decision. But to me, it does appear that there is going to be what is called a negative linear correlation. There definitely seems to be a pattern, right? We don't have any data in that top right corner. And it is clearly going down, uh, down to the right as we look at the points. Now, of course, it's not a perfect line. Not everything's in a perfect line, but it, hopefully we kind of look at that, look at the overall pattern. There definitely seems to be some, uh, some negative correlation there. And we capture the strength of that pattern with the linear correlation coefficient, which is given by R. Now, in another video, we'll talk about how we can calculate R and go into more details about what that correlation coefficient actually means and how we interpret it. But for this data set, when I calculated it using technology, the R value was negative 0 0.0635. So if the negative means, again, we do have a negative association. It is moving downward. Uh, and then 0 0.6, that means that there is somewhere like a moderate, maybe a moderate to strong uh, negative correlation here. So there definitely seems to be a pattern to this data. It definitely seems that as the proportion of women goes up, the salary goes down. And that's what a negative correlation means. As one variable goes up, the other one goes down. And so we can also find a line of best fit using technology, typically, uh, which uses the least squares algorithm, and that minimizes the distance from each point to the line. This is also very useful, um, and I had it calculated here. So this is what the line looks like. Basically, it takes every single ordered pair, every single dot on that plot, and this is the line that minimizes that distance from every single point to that line. This lets us make predictions about future data points using just our very simple y equals mx plus b form, which makes it very powerful for making predictions. And, okay, but now there's that pattern. We know that the proportion of women goes up, the salary goes down. What's our story? And does this mean that there is some grand conspiracy to pay women less than men? Well, let's look a little bit closer about what these data points actually are. And so let's start with the highest salary points. And so for the highest salary, those dots that I highlighted right there, those are all degrees in different engineering fields. Eight out of the 10 highest paying jobs were people who got degrees in engineering. Um, the other two, and again, you can say that those other two are actually pretty close to about 50%. Uh, we have astronomy and actuarial sciences, so doing mathematics. Um, now let's take a look at the jobs with the highest proportion of women at the other end of this pattern. Uh, and so the job with the highest proportion of women at over 97% is early childhood education. Uh, that is a major that is almost exclusively women. And we see that that's down there with a high proportion of women and a lower salary. Uh, this next point is the degree communication disorders and services. Uh, the next point would be medical assisting. And then our last over here would be elementary education and human services, uh, respectively. So what are the patterns here? The highest salaries, but lowest women were engineering and the highest women and the lowest salaries were education, services, and education and services. So what does that actually tell us about this? Is there some grand conspiracy to pay women less than men? Well, this all depends about the stories that we can try to tell now based on this data. So there is absolutely a negative relationship between the proportion of women in the major and the salary upon graduation. So what are the stories that are telling you? What is actually going on? Well, first of all, we see that those highest paying jobs are in engineering. And so maybe the problem is that women are being excluded from STEM fields. And there is certainly a bunch of anecdotal evidence about this. If you talk to women who've tried going into the STEM fields, 
Uh, they talk about it being kind of a boys club between either the fellow students, maybe the professors, maybe counselors. Um, and so that could definitely be one of the issues. We could also say that, well, women are just motivated by helping each other. Those jobs over there on, on that lower corner, those are all jobs and services. That's education. That's helping children. It is medical assisting. That's helping people in need. That is uh, disability services and human services. Those are all jobs that are very motivated by helping people. They are calls to service. And so maybe women are just more motivated by helping each other and helping other people than they are by money. Maybe women just aren't motivated by money as much. And of course, then kind of a corollary there, well, maybe we gotta ask the question, why doesn't society value jobs in education and service? Uh, should we be valuing those jobs more? Is there a grand conspiracy or do we just not have our priority straight? I don't know. I'm not here to answer those questions. Again, we just look at data and you have to figure out the story that you think tells or yeah, you have to you have to come up with your own stories. That's that's part of this. As an adult in the world who's going to be making decisions and voting for people and on different ideas, you need to figure out what you think about this. And hopefully have as much conversation as possible with a bunch of different people so that you get the best possible picture. Now, I want to reiterate Correlations are only when variables appear to be connected. It is always possible that two variables are correlated when there's no actual relationship between them. And this is just because this is a random and chaotic universe and weird things happen all the time. And I'm sure everyone has at least one example of something really weird happening that seems like it would be impossible, but it's just the fact that our, our universe is random and crazy things are always gonna happen. And so one of my favorite websites is this website, uh, Spurious Correlations. And this is one of the ones, it's by this guy, Tyler uh, Vegan. He actually uh, published a book of this as well. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, Mike Madonna, who is uh, a, a hockey superstar, an all-star, uh, one of the greatest American players of all time. His regular season assist numbers correlates with the customer satisfaction from CVS with an R value of 0.9, which is really, really good. So these two things are correlated with each other. The number of assists that a hockey player got is correlated with customer satisfaction with CVS. Now, do you think those things are actually related in somehow? Do you think there's some cause and effect there? I really hope you don't, because I don't think there could possibly be a relationship between those two things. It's just that randomness happens. Uh, I will link to Tyler's website in the comments or in the description of the video uh, below and you can definitely check it out there's some fun ones in there as well but that's going to wrap it up for this video so can you answer these following questions first of all if two variables are correlated can we easily discern which is the cause and which is the effect and can we claim causation and then the other two questions how do i visualize the relationship between two categorical variables and how do i visualize the relationship between two numerical var variables all right, hopefully we can answer those questions. Uh, hopefully this was informative and helped. And as always, don't take care of yourselves.